During the 1950s, over in Ohio, a professor of electrical engineering and astronomy, Dr. John D. Krause, designed the Big Air Radio Telescope. It was a prototype that cost $23,000 and preceded the building of the Big Air Radio Observatory. Although the telescope was seated on the roof of two university buildings, Krause was eventually granted 20 acres of land to construct the radio observatory. The choice of land wasn't completely random. Its remote location ensured a minimal risk of other interfering radio signals. Because the observatory wasn't built to pick up radio signals from the Earth, or satellites even. No, Dr. Krauss hoped his observatory would manage to find proof of extraterrestrial life. The project was quite something. From 1956 to 63, the observatory was constructed mainly by students in order to reduce the costs. When the observatory, nicknamed Big Air, was finally operational, it was larger than three football fields. The Big Air was equipped with two airs, if you will. On this photograph, you can see them. Generally, if radio signals were received by one air, after several minutes, the other air received them as well. In order to potentially receive radio signals from extraterrestrial life, Krauss first had to map outer space for radio waves. It was quite the pioneering project and only after 10 years in 1973 was it completed. From then on they could monitor with these wavelengths to detect radio transmissions that potentially originated from extraterrestrial entities. It wasn't until four years later that the Big Ear Telescope detected a signal that was unusual to say the least. The radio telescope received a powerful unidentified signal on August 15, 1977. Because of the technology used back then, instead of acting on radio signals immediately, astronomers would look at clusters of radio signals that had been picked up in the past couple of days. So usually these were all somewhat predictable and the same, but astronomer Jerry Eman, going over the documentation of the past couple of days, noticed the unusual signal. The powerful narrowband radio signal expressed as a string of code captured his intention. The signal contained signs of potential extraterrestrial origins and certainly a source that wasn't within our solar system. In total, the signal lasted 72 seconds. Because of how spectacular it was, Eamon circled it and wrote WOW next to it. From then on, the signal was known as the WOW signal. So why was this seemingly innocuous string of letters and numbers so special? Well, several things about it are unusual. I'm going to get into the technicalities for a short bit, so bear with me. Basically, the string of code, the 6EQUJ5, portrays the intensity of the signal. The graph you're seeing right now visualizes that intensity. The numbers between 1 and 9 indicate the variation of intensity between 1.0 and 9999. Above 10, the intensity is indicated by a letter, in this case A for 10.0 to 10.9999, B for 11.0 to 11.9999, and so on. Right, so the strength of this signal at several values, generally a 0.5 error margin is included, 6 being 6, E being 14.5, Q being 26.5, U being 30.5, J being 19.5, and 5 as 5.5. In the color chart that is on screen right now, you can see the exceptional values. The short wow signal burst is in the bottom left. The strings of numbers don't really say anything until you know that when Big Air received the peak of its signal's intensity, namely U between 30 and 31, it was the highest measured intensity by a radio telescope ever. So the intensity of this number is literally devoid of any dimension. Because the Big Air is a stationary telescope that scans space through the Earth's rotation, it observes a limited area. The maximum amount of time to observe an object was 72 seconds before the Earth's rotation moved the telescope away from it. Knowing this, it was hypothesized that any signal that lasted for exactly 72 seconds would have a rising intensity for the first 36 before it reached the core of the telescope only to proportionally lose intensity the next 36 seconds. Both the length of the wow signal, namely 72 seconds, as the trajectory of the signal's intensity corresponded with the expectations of a signal of extraterrestrial origin. Scientists have not been able to find the source of the signal. Since 1977, no such similar signal has been detected. It was received from a part of space where you wouldn't expect any radio waves of the sort. What's curious as well is that although the first air received it, the second air never confirmed the signal passed. This indicates that the signal was abruptly cancelled. 
The SETY, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, is a term for scientific searches for intelligent extraterrestrial life. SETY has not been able to explain the source of the radio signal for the past 40 years. Now, the sole purpose of SETY is to identify signals such as this one, and the WOW signal is the only one of all those years of which the source has not been located. Now, there is an understandable reason for why after over 40 years nobody can say where the signal originated. It has only been detected once, so astronomers that investigate it bump into the same problem over and over again. In the words of an astronomer, Imagine if you heard a sound in your basement one night, but you cannot find its source and it never appears again, then it's nearly impossible to discover what made the sound. And until another signal such as this one is detected, its origin will most likely never be found. Because there is no obvious source for the signal, many scientists theorize about its origins. The past four decades have seen many theories. Obviously, the most exciting one is that of extraterrestrial life that sent the powerful short signal. Yet other theories are perhaps a little bit more plausible. Many scientists claim that it is probably because of human interference that disturbed the activities of the radio telescope, which led to the curious signal. Because of the contents of the signal, a strong radio signal on a very narrow frequency, which means that it has a specific wavelength. Generally, this is seen with electronic devices or fighter jets. Yet there are particular ways that signals from the Earth can be filtered out from the signals Big Air receives, and those filters have been used on the WOW signal many times of the, over the past years. And time and time again, the signal proves that it did, in fact, originate in space. In 2015, the scientists published a new theory in an attempt to explain the origins of the WOW signal. A hydrogen cloud surrounding a comet could explain it, Back in 1977, the astronomers hadn't detected any comets in the area that was scanned by Big Air. It was in 2006, nearly 30 years later, when recalculating orbits of comets, it was determined two of them, the 266P Christensen and the P2008Y2 Gibbs, must have been in the area where the WOW signal originated. Other scientists generally disagree with this theory because of two reasons. Firstly, comets are not known to produce signals with this type of intensity, nor on the wavelength that the signal was received on. And secondly, if it was a comet, then the second air of big air should have received the same signal after 70 odd seconds. That didn't happen. And it's impossible for a comet to disappear from big air's range within this time frame. As for the Big Air Radio Observatory, its scientists were included in the Guinness Book of Records thanks to their prolonged search extraterrestrial life. The university sold the land the observatory was built on in 1983 and the land developers had different things in mind for it. In order to expand a nearby golf course and construct hundreds of homes, I demolished the Big Air Radio Observatory in 1998. And, well, other observatories around the world are still searching for unknown radio signals that could indicate extraterrestrial life. But so far, none have been found well over 40 years after the wild signal was received. It remains one of our closest encounters with potential extraterrestrial life. But fortunately for those curious about extraterrestrial life, SETY telescopes are continuously scanning space for unusual radio signals. So if another wild signal were to be transmitted, the modern technological improvements most likely would be able to determine where it came from. Thank you for watching this video. If there's a topic or event you'd like to know more about, let me know your thoughts in a comment. I would also like to thank all my patrons for their generous support. If you enjoy House of History and want to support my work, consider checking me out on Patreon. For just $1 a month, you will already get access to the exclusive monthly Patreon series. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.